ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Diana Gold Holland, your host again this week, and I'm broadcasting to you from downtown beautiful Vancouver. It's an absolutely gorgeous early fall day here today, and so I invite you to join me on a park bench to talk um, with a good friend of mine, Kathy Ryle, Catherine Ryle, from Oregon. Uh, Kathy's waiting by on the on the bench just for us to have our little chat about wellsprings of hope, her favorite topic. In fact, we call her the hope activist. But first, let me go through uh, the premises of our show for those who are new to it. Uh, we maintain our show and many other people in the world who have heard of this story maintain that we humanity are not alone at this time, that we have great, extraordinary, as a matter of fact, help available to us. And that help is in the form of great teachers who are now emerging quietly onto the world scene. Now, there is a group of them of 14 currently in the world. At their head stands the Lord Maitreya, who is known to the Christian religions as the Christ, to the Jews as the Messiah, to the Hindus as the Imam Mahdi, to the Hindu, uh, sorry, the Muslims as the Imam Mahdi, and Krishna for the Hindus. And he is actually the world teacher for this new age now beginning. Even though he is expected by all of these great religions and more, he is actually a modern teacher come for all, all people, even those uh, who do not believe in the, quote, second coming. So he is in effect here now. He has been since July 19th, 1977, and as we mentioned, emerging onto the world scene. Now, he has not been idle all this time. His love has been pouring into the world because he is actually, as the Christ, the representative of divinity on this, plan, uh, on this planet at this time. The Christ is not actually a person, but a role in what is called the hierarchy, the spiritual hierarchy of masters, uh, of which these 14 are the earliest to... to um, to appear. So those are our premises. We are not alone. We have help, and that help comes in the form of these great teachers with the Lord Maitreya at their head. So let's move on now then to our show and back to our park bench and welcoming our guest, Catherine Ryle from Oregon, a teacher with a background in marine biology a student of the Ageless Wisdom Teachings, and a committed volunteer for SHARE International U.S., who has been making known these premises uh, that I just talked about uh, for, for many, many years. Kathy has been doing this as a volunteer for over 30 years, and she brings broad enthusiasm and very broad practical perspectives to our consideration. So today, ta Catherine, Catherine is going to talk about hope. Welcome, Kathy. How it's are you today? It's a pleasure to be with you, Diana. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a beautiful day here in Eugene park. as well. Oh, that's great. <laughs> all right. Kathy, I want to have this first segment to be all about you and your story. Please tell us how you first heard about the reappearance, what grabbed you about the story, why you're so passionate about it, all of those good things. We want to hear your story now. 
Well, what got me started in all this, first of all, um, I first heard about this uh, when Benjamin Krem spoke in Portland in January of 1982. And at that time, I was pregnant with my second child, a young mother, about to move to Alaska, and had already for many years been studying many different spiritual teachings uh, start, I started doing transcendental meditation in, in college. So I was already primed to be wondering about what is going on in the world and what does the future hold. So I was with a, a group of young mothers. We had found each other in Eugene, and we were all interested in this sort of thing. And one of us heard about his talk in Portland, and we're two hours south in Eugene. And we said, hey, let's go. So we piled into the car, left our husbands in charge of the babies, and um, met, gathered at, the, I believe it was at a large church in Portland. And we had heard that you might experience pretty significant things, so we were curious about that. When he came out on the stage, he, he, he comes out and he just sits in silence. There's no introduction. I didn't know what Benjamin Krem looked like. But anyway, he sat there, and I just went into meditation. And he proceeded, when that time was over, he proceeded to give the best explanation I had heard about the purpose and meaning of life and how it related to the much larger picture, in particular, of the evolution of consciousness. And he started his talk by saying, this is information for you to consider. And it was so reasonable and so calm, and I left that. I was absolutely intrigued. I bought whatever they were selling in the way of books and information outside and left the well, – I remember walking down the steps of the church just wanting to hug everybody who had been at the lectures, just left with this tremendous feeling of love for everyone and very inspired. Okay. And that's how I got started. Okay, let me fill in the missing part here for, for our readers. Re, why do I keep saying readers? It's listeners. <laughs> Sorry there, folks. <laughs> this all his son on the park bench is getting to me. Um, so Benjamin Krem, who is the spokesperson that uh, Catherine went to see that in that early meeting, uh, is the chief purveyor of information on the reappearance of the Masters of Wisdom and the emergence of, of this body of teachers with, with um, the Christ Maitreya at their head. Uh, he uh, started with a book called exactly that, The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom. And uh, he has been talking since the very uh, early 70s to audiences around the world uh, he is not paid for doing this. It is an act of selfless service that he has engaged in. And there have been many, many developments since he first started. He has uh, 16 or 17 books out on this topic, which are absolutely fascinating. Now, what happens when Benjamin Krem gives a talk uh, in a town is that Maitreya uses this opportunity to send blessing to all of the people that are there in attendance, a kind of uh, gift to them for having to come and be open to this news. And through that blessing that is sent out to the audience, it also goes out into the, it radiates out into the town where the talk is being given. So indeed, Benjamin Krem sits there at the beginning of the talk in, in total silence with no introduction. And um, he at this time, Maitreya takes the opportunity to look out through his eyes at every person in the audience. Now, he's not looking at how you're dressed or whether you wear glasses or not or anything like that. He's not reading your mind to see if you're thinking about your grocery list or anything like that. He, Maitreya sees your soul, sees your higher self during this one-on-one -on -one communication. And uh, this is why people very often have uh, sense the energies very strongly and have uh, varied reactions. Uh, some people start crying, some even fall asleep because of the power of these energies. And very, very often, very not 
well, very many people actually see uh, Benjamin Krem's form disappear into brilliant light, and some even see the image superimposed either on his face or uh, Maitreya standing behind Mr. Krem in, in his own light body. So this is the blessing that so affected Kathy, and it's not surprising that uh, she felt like hugging everyone as she came out because it is an experience of pure and unconditional love. So that's, it was, that's what was going on there. And, uh, and it was wonderful, and we chatted about it all the way back. Um, and it, it, that's what got me going, uh, that experience and the information and the idea that this was made more sense than anything that I had come across in terms of explaining the big picture of why we're here and what we're doing. So I absorbed that as much as I could, meanwhile, in the midst of huge life changes of moving to Alaska. Um, I, I treated that information. I wanted to talk to anybody about it, whoever I could, was willing to discuss the topic. But in, in general, that was mostly fundamentalist of believers, which was fine because I'm happy to discuss it any way anybody wants to. But... Um, for that some months, I, I related to that information with the idea I wanted to believe it was true. And then uh, at Christmas time, living with now my two children, a young b new baby and my first child, out in a remote hatchery in, on Prince William Sound in Alaska, my husband was gone quite a bit, working very hard, and it was Christmas time, and I was li listening to the Hallelujah Chorus. And I felt like I was sort of struck by a thunderbolt. And I went, I, I, thinking of my whole history of spiritual researching and what I was trying to understand, what was going on on the planet, I went, oh, my gosh. I went from hoping it was true to knowing it was true. I just knew this information was legitimate and authentic. And wow, so that is, Kathy, what a great me place to be. That's the break of approaches. Great story. When we come back, we'll be talking about how those ripples of love that Kathy was feeling then spread up wider and wider in circles around her. So join us in five to three. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Spiritual. Metaphysical. Green Living. Psychic, alternative healing, life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. Maitreya's Mission, the book by Benjamin Krem, is a riveting exploration of life ahead. It reveals how the world teacher, Maitreya, and other ancient guardians of the human race are emerging now and are showing us how to release our divine potential. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. I didn't know it would be so hard. It's easier to heal others than to heal myself. If you or someone you know has a drug or alcohol problem, you are not alone. Recovery was the hardest job I ever had and the most important. For information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.
Welcome back, listeners. We're joining you uh, with Share on the Air Radio, thought-provoking views behind the news, and I'm speaking today with uh, Hope activist Catherine Ryle in Oregon. So, Kathy, we want to talk now about uh, how these ripples of, of hope that you've felt these 30-odd 30 30 odd years about this story, how they've spread beyond your own life and what you've, how you've noticed that occurring. Well, I started um, paying attention to as much as I could and world events and how things were going in sync with all the information that I would be getting from Share International, which in those days was by mail um, or else by getting Benjamin Krim's books as they've come out uh, over the, all these years. So everything for those that who was... Don't, who don't, for those... Hello? For those who yes. uh, are not familiar, uh, Share International uh, started as a magazine uh, of which Mr. Krem is uh, one of the chief editors. It's absolutely fascinating. We'll talk a bit more about it later, and we invite you to go and see uh, the magazine, which is now available online. So the URL for that is share www.share-international.org. It is a wellspring of information that um, will give you much hope as well. So let's carry on, uh, Kathy. Well, um, in every, as this information came forward over all, over the year after year, as it developed, the basic message was always the same, was always consistent, didn't change. New developments kept happening, and there were a series of predictions about what would be emerging in the world. This is the predictions were made in 1988, and sure enough, those things came to pass. And all these things just continued to be over and over again, affirmations of the validity of this information. So by and just to uh, fill in people for a couple was, of examples, just sorry, just to fill in people uh, with a couple of examples, it was predicted, for example, uh, in those early days that um, Nelson Mandela would be released from prison that the Berlin Wall would fall, that the Palestinians would have their own country, and even at that time that Mar Margaret Thatcher, at the height of her popularity, would uh, soon be uh, deposed or leaving politics, as it were. So these were some of these early predictions that were absolutely so unlikely as to be almost impossible, and yet all of them came true, and all of them uh, were... were uh, actually ways for, for hope to appear in the world. When the wall came down, that was really something, etc., cetera, et cetera. Thanks, Kathy, for reminding me of those early predictions. They were astounding, and it was, as you say, very of great hope when, they, when those things all came true. And they are all well, available. In terms, of, in, in terms of, of magnetizing further hope and, and strengthening the perspective of this is unfolding as it's predicted because, for example, with the Berlin Wall, it was inconceivable that the Berlin Wall could come down uh, when when Maitreya predicted it in 1988. And, you know, a year and a half later or so, ni November of 1989, it came down very quickly by the presence of people power. And that's been the overarching theme, the, uh, the ongoing growth and uh, development and strengthening and resonance of people power. So meanwhile, by now it's about 1990, and I am now teaching high school in Eugene. I'm back in the lower 48. And, and when you start paying attention to young people, you, you get a sense of their take on the world and where they're going with what matters to them. And some of my students were very creative artists, but what, I, what I'm seeing, and it has only exploded since then, one example that's very visible is street art and the calls for freedom and the calls for justice, extremely creative expressions of the needs in the world that exactly echo what Maitreya is saying, the need for hope. And 
um, one of his, I'd love to read one of his um, messages, messages number 135, because this is exactly what we've seen. This message was given in February of 1982, forming themselves into Well, we might not have time for the whole thing, um, Kathy, Two but uh, we've got a couple of minutes to break. We've got a couple of minutes to break, so please let us let us in on this. Um, I'll go ahead with two sentences. Yep, go ahead um, until the break them calls it away. <laughs> I'm missing what you're saying. I'm sorry. There seems to be a um, conflict with people uh, being able to hear one another. Um, we'll check that out. Uh, please go ahead, Catherine. We're, we're looking forward to hearing this message of hope from Maitreya. Just two sentences. Forming themselves into groups, men of goodwill will brandish aloft their hopes and dreams of justice and peace. This clamor will light the torch of truth among the nations, and at its center shall I be found. And I have... I have how do you see These that working out now? And a great deal to me and have fired my commitment and enthusiasm because they are so beautiful and they are visible in the outer world. Those messages, by the way, folks, are available. The, there were 140 of them given uh, all at once. The um, in all rather, they have been collected into a book called Messages from Maitreya the Christ, and uh, you can, when you read these messages aloud, they are very very powerful. The energies of Maitreya's words are magnetic. The energies are magnetized into into the books, and so you can have this experience of love if you are truly concentrated and focused as you read any of these messages out loud. They are very inspirational. You can find out about them on Share International um, website www share-international.org uh, in the book section and there are uh, excerpts that you can read as well. So I invite you to do that uh, as we go to break. And uh, I also invite you to check out our uh, Facebook page for Share on the Air Radio. There you will find many, many goodies, including four free downloads of other books by Mr. Krem, other books that uh, describe the hope that is what uh, shape this hope is taking in the world today there are there are very many um items there on the awakening of humanity and um the approach to the new cooperation in the new age these are very very inspiring books and they are avail they are available for free download so be sure to check that out on our um uh, uh facebook page um so let us uh, get back to uh, our, our talk with, with Kathy. Um, so, Kathy, please uh, continue to, to uh, uh, tie us in to these ripples of hope. We were talking about the creativity in, in young people, and surely when we see you know, some of this graffiti with these words of empowerment on our walls, um, that's, you know, it, it is uh, bursting out all over. Well, and I think a hope is popping up in many different forms, but in particular, I like to pay attention to the youth because they bring such vitality and creativity to these transformations that are taking place. Um, so, I what in 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 this body of information, there have been predictions by Maitreya, and there's also been great amount of wisdom published in the form of articles from the master. And one of the sources of information was a collection of what sort of it was titled "The Promise of the Future," and what sort of things are happening that that will be coming, and those are coming true. Too. And some of those areas have to do with a sense of oneness amongst humanity and uh, a simpler lifestyle. 
healing waters, and I take particularly interest in the healing waters because they there are now three wells on the planet that that are known to have healing waters, and it has been explained that there will be healing waters everywhere that Maitreya has appeared and spoken to groups of people, which is over 200 places around the world, one of those places being Portland, Oregon, on January 4th, 1998, where he he has the ability to literally appear out of the blue, speak in whatever language is necessary, and then sooner or later under karmic law, healing wells will be found in, in near those places. So I, when I speak about this, I always like to say, Portland, Oregon, somewhere in that region, we've got a lot of water in the Northwest. Um, we're going to, sooner or later, a healing well will be discovered here. But the one that's closest to the United States is in Tlacote, Mexico. And there's more information available on the website about how to arranged to get a hold of that healing water or homeopathic tablets prepared from it. But it's one thing after another of positive possibilities in the world that are encouraging that say things are going to change. The growth in in the masses of people that are coming out to claim their birthright, to claim justice and freedom and an end to war and addressing environmental issues that passion is simply growing larger and larger and larger. And so in recent years, there have been the largest gatherings around the world in history of human beings calling for right relations and a, and a healing of these aspects of living that clearly are not working, that are falling apart. And so there's so many alternative uh Effort which Maitreya predicted. That's right. Which my Maitreya predicted the rise of the voice of the people. This is one of his main themes, and we see that coming through in spades. Thanks for making that point, Catherine. We'll be back on the other side of the break. Stay tuned and stay with us on our park bench. See you on the other side. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D-E-B-L-I-V medium.com. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Did you know that Share International Radio is more than just a podcast? If you're hungry for thought-provoking views behind the news, there may be a Share International event happening soon near you providing a spiritual perspective you'll find nowhere else. To locate an event in your area, visit shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hello and welcome back to our show on Share on the Air Radio. Our coworker Roland, if you happen to be listening to the radio spots just now, the the ad spots, you will have heard um, uh, our commentator mention that there may be an event nearby. And sure enough, I want to uh, let you know that if you live in the Seattle area, you'll want to attend the Esoteric Book Conference 2016, which is taking place next 
weekend near the University of Washington. Now there, my co-host, Cielito Pascual, who shares the, the, the program with me, uh, will be presenting all of the uh, reappearance information at a booth featuring the books of Mr. Krem. So very, um, um, very good luck, very good timing. The event is taking place Saturday and Sunday of next week, that's September 10th and 11th. So I invite you to uh, visit esotericbookconference.com for more information. That's esotericbookconference.com for this uh, event with Cialito, my co-host in person in Seattle next weekend. Uh, Talk about timing, eh, Kathy? Sounds like a great event. I wish I could be going. Yeah, me too. So uh, another thing that um, uh, you mentioned to me when we were preparing is the Master's Messages in Share International, these being uh, one of the two um, very, very um, important topics of hope that you wanted to be sure to cover. So let's go into that. Well, I have a quote here from a Master's Message in um, 2003, well, it was republished in 2005. It's called The Dark Before the Dawn. And what I found particularly significant about the Master's Messages is no matter what is going on, how he describes it in the most exquisite, clear, insightful language puts it in a context that makes it understandable. So in the challenges that we're facing today where we see so many things that aren't working, that are falling apart, that are discouraging and disturbing, it's part of this transition as a whole new age is being born. And this is how he put it, Just uh, I think this is just one sentence. The Dark Before the Dawn is the title of his, of his article. We are witnessing simultaneously the rebirth of hope and freedom on a mass scale and the last efforts of the old order to reestablish itself against the tide of evolution. To me, that just explains how it can be so confusing right now, and it and it. it it underscores why I'm so passionate about explaining and sharing and emphasizing the message of hope that is happening at the same time because there is so much going on on the planet that is very positive, very encouraging, and it's been going on for three decades, absolutely. And it, it, the idea is we are going to make it. We're going to get there. We're not alone. We certainly have to change the way we live. We certainly have to change the things that don't work. But the wisdom and guidance is here to help us. And there are possibilities of renewal that we don't even know about yet that are waiting in the wings to be put in place to help transform some of the challenges. And I have some specific information on that. But I just think right now life is can be so challenging, and depending on how much media you take in, it's so important to remember that there's very positive things happening at the same time. And that's where I particularly focus on the youth because it's so dynamic and it's the we have the largest proportion of young people on the planet in the history of the world um i think it's 1.8 billion people between the age young people between the ages of 10 and 24 so they're a large proportion of humanity and they are here now because my tray is here and they have come to serve his purposes and fix things on this planet and they're full of enthusiasm and energy and I've been so impressed with what I've seen about what's happening and it's so easily accessible on the internet you can find all kinds of these things because that also has come to fruition the the internet and the connectivity of the planet to find out what else is going on everywhere Right. I I just second that most heartily, uh, Kathy. You know, these children that are born today 
you know, Mr. Krem and not only we, we, we sense intuitively that these children are different. They, uh, and and I think the reason for that is that they have come in at this time in group formation called in by their own souls to serve the plans of Maitreya at this time. They are equipped with totally, they're wired differently to how we are. They have grown up in a world where Maitreya has been all the time of their lives. So that gives them, you know, a quite a uh, quite a leg up right there. And also, as you were mentioning, all these new tools that are available, the internet, um, you know, you can you can you can put out your own music, you can put out your own movies, and a lot of this is free or almost next to free. The tools for creativity available today, just as these children are coming in, are absolutely astounding. We are really really at the beginning of what I think is a complete new renaissance period in history. And it is, Absolutely. of course, the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And Absolutely. And also, these children, uh, besides being strong leaders, I mean, they all have these different skills, but there are some of these children who have extraordinary, inexplicable abilities, prodigies, and they they're they're an inspiration they have they famous incredible artists and speak many languages and they come in with humility and very clear sense of what their purpose is and what they're about and in addition to what's happening with in the youth there's so much going on in the scientific community about uh addressing the needs of the of humanity very practically and very specifically and coming from a science background i'm always interested in that in what's being invented what's being developed innovations and technologies that can solve basic human need issues on the planet so the ones that that stick out in my mind have to do with um water purification and soil development um, and the money to help fund some of this is also coming from an unexpected source and that is extremely successful philanthropists are beginning to put their fortunes independently privately to serve the needs of humanity and I know of one particular um, man who earned a great deal of money from five-hour energy drink, and he is donating 99% of his multi-billion dollar fortune to solve human problems. And they're working on uh, electricity, electricity generation um, by bicycle in rural India and and water purification from the ocean, desalinization, but he's assembled teams of just incredibly creative uh, experts and innovators and technical people to invent devices that will solve these very, very basic needs and issues. So I always like to... Yeah, it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take much to go online and find out about all kinds of miraculous things that are being pulled together. And even by people in the third world on their, on their own um, ingenuity. I saw the other day somebody who had actually developed bicycles for, I think it was Ghana, that are made completely out of um, bamboo, which they have tons of. And so... Basic transportation can be had for almost next to nothing there because of, of this, you know, it, it's a tiny thing in the world, but still it is really, really important for the people that that, that live there. We know that tackling poverty has, has uh, become more and more successful with these millennial goals and uh, the things like the decrease in, in child mortality stats, for example, is is astounding. So Very. a lot of these things, as you say, um, I just wanted to touch, you said there were all kinds of wonderful, hopeful new technologies in, in the world um, that, that could be uh, produced in a mass way. What do you think of the cold fusion question? Well, that's probably the biggest and most significant thing because it was predicted that 
cold fusion, that is a form of nuclear power generation that is not polluting, that does not involve splitting the atom, which is fission, but it involves using heavy water, which is abundant and non-polluting, it's everywhere, it's natural, and using deuterium, that's called deuterium, to generate power by the process of fusion or putting molecules together, non-polluting, inexhaustible source of power, that is legitimate and real and happening. And much of the research has been going on very quietly in universities and research centers around the world. And in fact, it is beginning to emerge. They're coming so much closer to creating working models and examples of this actually functioning. So cold fusion is, it has another name now to, to evolve with the concept. They're known as low energy nuclear reactors. And oh. there's no concern about radiation and they, they generate heat by the power of fusion. I won't go into the technicalities of it, but it change the whole energy system um, with that being developed and it's close. I'm sorry, Kathy, we got cut off for just a sec. Could you repeat what it is that would change the whole energy system? Simply the, the use of cold fusion, right? The development of cold fusion technology all over the world, which is, which, which is absolutely within our grasp. So much has been uh, developed and researched, and it's, it's being experimented with very specifically right now. And of course, Maitreya did predict this, and he said that an isotope to be found in water would provide the clue for all of this. And this is one of his very early predictions, and again, a hopeful thing that has come true in the world. Join us on the other side of the break when we'll continue with thought-provoking views behind the news, share on the air radio, coming to you live. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Every night, when the skies are clear, a remarkable event can be witnessed. A UFO the size of five football fields is moving through the skies just like a star. It pulses. It blinks, it changes color. This spacecraft appeared before as the Star of Bethlehem. Find out what it all means. Visit ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. That's ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. Hi, this is Carly Simon for LifeBeat. The music industry fights AIDS. The AIDS crisis isn't over. There have been amazing scientific breakthroughs, but people are still dying, and your local AIDS organization needs your help more now than ever. Volunteer and make a difference.
welcome back. You're on Share on the Air Radio uh, with my guest today, uh, uh, Catherine. Sorry, <laughs> Catherine Ryle. Uh, Kathy, I, I just, uh, I, I'm so excited. You know, that all these ideas that we brought up again that that I'm just not not exactly coherent here. Uh, I just, where do you want to go next with this? I'm, you just got me rekindled again. <laughs> well, I I just want to reiterate that the how how therapeutic it is to encourage people to look for signs of hope, look for things that are positive because it is a law of the universe that energy follows thought. That is what you pay attention to grows. And I am all in favor of and enthusiastically support the concept that we pay attention to what is working, what is okay, what is growing and is positive and helpful and useful to meet the needs of the people of the world. So to the extent that we turn away from the emphasis on what is wrong and what's failing. We certainly have to be frank about what needs fixing, but we want to grow that which is heading in the right direction, which is emphasizing the unity of humanity, the oneness of all peoples in the world. I I like to point out in these areas of how things have developed two little specifics um, the Internet use in the year 2000, just 16 years ago, the Internet use on the planet was 6% of the population. And now, 50, as of 2015, the Internet usage is 43% of humanity uses the Internet. So an astounding expansion of people being able to connect with each other, even if they're separated by thousands of miles. And in the arena of harmony between the religions, I'm so proud of Eugene, Oregon, because we have here an interfaith prayer service every month on the 11th that has been going for 15 years that was born out of the uh, grief from 9-11 in 2001. We're just about the next one on September 11th in less than, well, in a week from today is will be it's it's never stopped it was not started as something to go on forever and but it has never stopped and uh, people from all the different religions come together once a month in Eugene to honor and respect each other's traditions and share something from their own there's no proselytizing it's just this is what we bring to the spiritual feast of the wisdom on the planet so, so yeah, here you have people showing up for for this this event that keeps it going. We have people showing up in the rallies all around the world. We have stories showing up in Share International magazine every month that talk about not only the progress of the emergence of Maitre and the Masters, but the progress of their uh, energies and their gu guidance and counsel getting implemented in the world. So there are always, as you say, Kathy, good stories of good things happening around the world uh, to help the people and to, to, to and, help um, us launch this brand new There have been so many world events going on. I put in a plug for on September 8th, this week is the International World Day of Prayer. So join the millions who are praying for peace and harmony and goodwill and healing and end of war. That's an annual thing happening, and it's just in a few days. Um, I'm not sure about how our time is going, Diana, but I did want to read something that I found so sweet and encouraging from a Spanish poet. Do we have time for that? We do indeed. Please go ahead. This is from Federico Garcia Lorca, and I have two sentences that this is what keeps me going. The day that hunger is eradicated from the earth, there will be the greatest spiritual explosion the world has ever known. Humanity cannot imagine the joy that will burst into the world on the day of that great revolution. 
Diana, I have no doubt whatsoever that we are going to witness that day soon where we will have a meal and know that no one on this planet is starving or needing food. And that's what I hope for. That's what I keep in mind in visualizing that, that because that beyond healing the environment, which is absolutely the number one issue, it is feeding the hungry, housing the hungry, providing shelter for the well, shelter, housing, education, and health care. Those are my trade's four priorities, and we are making progress on all fronts. And the further few little future pred- uh, predictions that have been mentioned in master's articles or in my trade's messages have to do with the tranquility tranquility and peace that we will experience will be in direct proportion to the chaos and conflict that we're experiencing now and also information about the strength of the united nations that it will become the creative forum for the planet of the the central forum to solve problems and issues without war and that transformation is on the horizon in all areas of human endeavor society and building and cities and health and in economics and that there will be a new livingness in our lives so I believe it, I support it, I share it, and I certainly hope that our listeners will consider that possibility uh, to help them get through these times of challenge. Well said, Kathy, and I want to just, just follow that with the idea once again that energy follows thought. So we can contribute both at the mental level as well as the physical level to bring in all of these things for justice and peace and sharing. And people, you know, to our listeners, if if this information has the ring of truth for you, of course you want to find out more about it. And that you can do, we've talked about many, many resources to do that, and you can find them on our website, shareontheairradio.org. But a way that you can contribute to help speed all of these developments is to help invite Maitreya and the Masters into our midst very, very concretely. Uh, and what happens then is if you have a thought to this, you contribute to the creation of the climate of hope and expectancy that can draw Maitreya forward. He is not allowed to show up like a magician waving a magic wand saying, poof, you do this, you do that. This is against human free will. It is against cosmic law. The uh, masters have to be invited to come before us, and that is... In doing that yourself, individually, you can help make that happen. And that, to me, is very, very hopeful. Our own destiny, our future is in our own hands, and we have the power to make all of it work, come out with the help of these great teachers who are now in our midst. Kathy, do you have a, a last word for us? It's been a delight. We're almost at the end of our program. Well, I certainly think while, while, you're you're putting think in that. Pl- <laughs> while, while you're putting in a plug for how we think, I also would remind people if they want to check out Serving the World Through Transmission Meditation. Ah, yes, of course. We uh, did a couple of shows on that. One of them just a couple of weekends ago, I was interviewing Krista Perez. So I will invite people to find out more about transmission on that show or on the website, www.transmissionmeditation.org. We're almost out of time. So just before we go, I'd like to remind people in the Seattle area of a very exciting event next weekend, the Esoteric Book Conference show near the University of Washington. My co-host, Cialito Pasquale, will be there in person presenting this information and uh, inviting you to check out some books by Benjamin Krem. So if you're in Seattle, that's uh, September 10th and 11th, next Saturday and Sunday. Check it out on esotericbookconference.com. 
And uh, as for us, uh, I remind you that you can hear our show, Share on the Air Radio, both live, as many people are doing now, but also on demand. There are over 40 shows available, and you will find them either on the uh, Share on the Air Radio page on Ohm Times Radio or on our own website, www.shareontheairradio.org. If this information is totally new to you, you will want to check out the very first two uh, editions of our show when uh, Cielito interviewed our guest Dick Larson, and those two shows give you the complete background concerning the world teacher Maitreya, such as who he is, why he's here, what his priorities are that Kathy has already mentioned, and more specifically, why we should be listening to uh, Maitreya and these other great teachers in our midst. A last quote that you'd like to present us, or a last uh, promise of the future? Great. I do have a quote to present, and it's about the youth, and it's from an article by the Master in April of 2012, published in Share International Magazine, that's titled, Youth at the Helm. Just a sentence. It is the young who have the answers, who understand that humanity is one, who call for justice and sharing and an end to war. Fantastic. Sharing equals justice equals peace. Thanks for being with us, folks, and uh, catch you again next weekend. <laughs>